Praise the Lord. We're so glad you chose to join us for this edition of the Faith Builders broadcast with Philip and Michelle Steele. I believe the Lord has some wonderful things to say to us uh, through the Word of God today as we continue to look at this subject of uh, how that the mind is the gateway, thoughts are the gateway uh, into our lives. And so, uh, of course, my beautiful wife, Michelle, has been with us this whole month. We've got to do TV together a whole month. Praise God. Praise God. And it's been a flow of revelation and how God has brought things to our understanding concerning our thoughts and how we can allow our thoughts to yes. work for His good in our life, bringing God's design in, yes. or allow the uh, wrong thoughts to take us in the wrong direction. And we choose the right thoughts. We do. And we talked about how uh, we started with, and, and I'm going to synopsize briefly. Uh, we talked about beginning in the book of John where it says that, uh, that Satan had uh, put the thought in Judah's heart to betray Jesus. And the Woost Bible says that Satan having hurled that thought with an intensity so strong that it stayed. And that then on down about verse 27 or so, it says that Judas, Satan then entered into, into Judas and he went and betrayed Jesus. The thought came in verse 2 at that point. The, the thoughts had been coming. It, you can go back and watch those previous programs and, and hear all that. But here's the point. He thought on that long enough until he eventually did it. Yeah. Then we talked about Eve and how Eve uh, allowed the enemy to talk so long that he paved a road into her mind. And we talked about the fact that the word devil is not so much a name as it is a description. Yes. My name is Philip Steele. I am a pastor. Philip Steele is a pastor. Pastor describes what I do. All right? Uh, if we want to say this, the devil, his name is actually Lucifer. All right? Even terms like Satan, Slewfoot, the old dragon, the serpent, those are all descriptive terms of, of Lucifer. And so we know that his, that, that descriptive term of him, devil, is from the two words in, in the Greek, dia and balos, and, and dia is to pound repeatedly over and over again like you're throwing a ball against a wall and it's coming back to you. And then, of course, balos is with a road. And so he, and penetrate, penetrate, yeah. pen, penetrate with a road. Yeah. And so the enemy is pounding on a person's mind over and over and over again with the intention of penetrating the mind and then the word strategies in 1 Corinthians where he said, we're not ignorant of his devices, that word strategies is with a road. That's how he does that. So that's a descriptive term of how the enemy operates. And that's why we say over and over again, there are no inconsequential thoughts. Right. There are no thoughts that mean nothing. Every thought's important. Yes. And when we recognize this is how God designed us, he designed us to receive his thoughts. And as a result, we will be receiving the image that he has for our life because words transmit images. Yeah. He's given us his words. His thoughts are, are container, are, are, words are containers of God's thoughts. So yeah. his thoughts are contained in the words of his, his writings to us. When we receive that, we receive his word. We're receiving God's thoughts towards us. Right. You know, he said in Jeremiah 29, 11, my thoughts towards you are good, not evil with an end and an expectation. Uh, in other words, I've got thoughts to do you good. I've got thoughts that are a design, a plan of what I want for your life, and they're good. It's something you're going to, it's worth yeah. you looking forward to. Yeah. Well, when we receive the word of God, we'll begin to see that. It will become our perception. We'll yeah. begin to see, especially when here in the New Testament, we Amen. allow the thoughts of Amen. our salvation in Christ and who we are in Christ and heirs and, and the light of the gospel shining in our 
perception so that we have an image of what God wants to do in our life. Yeah. His salvation, his blessing, his uh, protection over our life. You know, Brother Hagin used to say this all the time. He would talk, uh, well, and we, we've said it, and I'll, I'll uh, 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 sort of paraphrase what he would say, but he would basically say this, that really what was happening when you would see who you were in Christ and these different things, your mind was being renewed. Yes. And until you had a mind renewal, you could not see and grasp those things. Yes. And so the point that you're making and that I'm making is that if I keep thinking those same thoughts, it's going to keep me going down that same road. But when there's a mind renewal, there's a thought renewal. Yes. And I can go a different direction. Yes. You, you preach that message about think CB. If you'll think in line with the Word of God, you'll uh, see in line with the Word of God, and then you're going to be yeah. walking, and you'll, the action of your life will then begin. But it starts with how we think. Yeah. It starts with that renewing of the mind, and I, I think that's what's important. You know, you've taught for years in the prison and in the jail system uh, uh, to um, help people who are coming out of addiction begin to renew their mind. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, in the local church, c people who are coming out of a lifestyle of sin, a life of walking without God, now we've got to renew the mind because the renewing of the mind helps us to participate <laughs> in yeah. what God has for us. Yeah. It's, it's the key to us being able to go further in the things of God. So a person can get born again, but to walk in the fullness yeah. of what's available in, in, yeah. in Christ, the, re the renewing of the mind is necessary. So um, Romans chapter 8 is a, a key scripture that you've used in teaching us the importance. And um, I want to look at verse 5. It says, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. For they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. And that word mind there, it says, they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Um, the one translation says they have their outlook shaped by the things of the flesh. I believe that's New Living Translation. Mm -hmm. They have their outlook shaped by the things of the flesh and the others have their outlook shaped by the things of the Spirit. And that's what we want to do. We want to allow the, the Word of God to shape our outlook. Yeah. And, and it's, it's so important because notice what it says. It says, uh, you started there in verse 5, they that are after the things of the... Of the they, for, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit... For to be carnally minded, or the minding of the flesh, is death. Yes. But to be spiritually minded, or the minding of the Spirit, is life and peace. Well, the Lord broke this down for me in the most elementary terms, I think, that how many times have you heard a mother tell a child, all right, listen, I need you to mind me. Yes. In other words, hear what I'm saying and mind that. Well, you know, we think mind and we think obey. Put it in your mind. Keep this in your memory, right? And he's telling us, if I'm putting the things of the flesh in my mind, in my mind yeah. I'm going to mind that. If, if that's what I'm focusing on, if that's what I'm thinking on. But if I'm putting the things of the Spirit in my mind, that's what I'm going to mind. Yes. And he, go ahead. There's a, uh, I, I wrote down a statement that you made that has stuck with me, and it, it, it is uh, this. Thoughts are like steering wheels towards the spiritual or the carnal. Yeah. And that helped me so much that thought is like a steering wheel. If I, if I take my steering wheel, I can direct where I'm going in that car. I can, I can turn in the right direction. Yeah. And if I'm taking the right thought, it's steering me towards the Spirit, right. towards the plan of God for my life, towards the salvation that's available for me, if I'm taking the right thought. 
So the enemy wants to bring in uh, the wrong thought. Yeah. I don't have to take it. No. You I don't say, have yeah, to Yeah, you steer. should say that again. I don't have to take the yeah. wrong thoughts. I am not obligated to think wrong, yeah. to think against God's word, to think fear thoughts, to think worry thoughts. I am under no obligation to think wrong. I don't have to. I can always choose the right thoughts. And that's the responsibility of us as believers. Because, because that's that's the key. And, and very often, especially in our circles, it's, it's taught uh, a lot, and, and we should teach it a lot, but I think to a large extent, sometimes it loses its potency because we talk about renewing the mind. And we talk, but I will talk to believers that are dealing with things and wondering how to get the victory over it, and it's tied to renewing your mind. It, because it, oftentimes people think once I get saved, and then I just go through the process of start to think like a Christian, and then I'm done. But you know, Brother Hagen said, your mind needs to be removed like Every renewed, day. like your hair needs to be combed. <laughs> yeah. You get up in the morning, you got, you've been asleep all night. You need yeah. to fix your hair. <laughs> he said, your mind doesn't stay renewed any more than your hair stays combed. You got to renew your mind because you're what you're, you're hearing things on the job. You're hearing your family tell you evil reports. I mean, just wrong thoughts on the billboards, wrong thoughts on, on the television commercials. There's wrong thoughts everywhere so we've got to just like you comb your hair not just once a day I comb my hair more than once yeah. Yeah. <laughs> why because it gets messed up during the day and the mind can be unrenewed if it's left to itself well the mind the mind will tend to fall back into old patterns if you don't keep it renewed yes you have to keep it renewed there listen just like there's no such thing as a believer that does not have to resist the devil every day. You have to. Because he, he's not, there's no day that he's not on his job. I have to resist him every day. Every day is a faith day. Every day is a faith right? day. Right? You get up every day and take your shield take and the resist shield the devil. Above all. Right? Yeah. So every day you get up and you say, not thinking that way. I'm not thinking like that. And you might have to verbalize it. Amen. Yes. I've yes. told people over the years, if you got a problem with sin, it's a mind issue. You, you're thinking that way. When that thought comes into your mind, if you stop and you go, nope, sin will not have dominion over me. That's right. I've been delivered from the power of sin. I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. And, and you may not feel that way. You may not see yourself that way. But you can't ever see yourself being something that you have not first thought of yourself being. That's good. You just Think can't. CB. Think CB. <laughs> Amen. Go ahead. Ephesians 4 says it this way in verse 22, that you put off concerning the former, and the, the King James uses the word conversation, and that word in the New Testament always means behavior, uh, that you put off concerning the former behavior. Well, you know, you just said you've, got, you've, you've encountered believers. I've encountered Christians yeah. who have said, I'm doing things I don't want to be doing. You know, I encountered Christians who said, I've got a problem with alcohol. And people say, well, how can you be a Christian and have a problem with alcohol? If you think wrong. Unrenewed mind. An unrenewed mind. If a person is having a problem with sin, it's a problem in the mind. Uh, and so he says, you put off concerning the former behavior, the yeah. actions, the lifestyle of the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful least, deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Yeah. Well, that's not saying that your mind has a spirit different from your born again not spirit. Not a conscious and, an un and a subconscious mind. He's saying you need to be renewed until your mind is under the, the governing control of your born again spirit. Yes. Until your mind is cooperating with your spirit. Yeah. Be renewed until your mind is spiritual. Yeah. And, and the, the person who's been walking with God and renewing their mind, putting the word in, washing in the water of the word every morning, reading, you know, not, not that it's a diligence, I've got to clock in in the morning, but I'm, I'm, I'm letting the light shine in. Although that, that type of diligence needs to be there. The diligence needs to be there because of the diligence of the enemy exactly. to try to bring in wrong thoughts. That washing of the word, cleansing your, your thoughts in the 
word of God, uh, feeding your spirit on the word of God, that person is, is easy for God to instruct because they're already seeing in line with what God's saying. Because they're in that place. They're, yeah. they're renewed in the mind so that their mind already is agreeing with what the Spirit of God would say to them. Yeah. They don't have to, to hear from God in their spirit and then go argue with their head right. about doing what Come God on. said. Yeah. Because yeah. the head is already renewed and governed with the, with the Word it's of God. It's being led by the Spirit. Because we've renewed it with the Word. That's why the Bible says don't give any place to the devil. And, and, and that word place is that word topos, which is a, is a strategic word Yes. That, that, that leads us back to, how we think, a map yes. of the way we think. He says, don't give him any strategic place in your life. If I'm getting up every day, and you, to use your phrase, I'm clocking in and I'm renewing my mind, I am giving the devil no place because here's what the enemy will do. He'll lay low. He'll lay low when, when you're renewing your mind and you're giving him no place. There are things he'll lay low on until you get up one day and you decide not to clock in. <laughs> then he sees this opportunity. He's an opportunist. Or if he hears something coming out of your mouth that goes against the word of God. Oh, really? That's well, what let they me believe. play on that. Yeah, because he, he knows that. what the scripture says. Yeah. And scripture says from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Yes. So it, he knows you really believe that because you're saying it. This being renewed in, in the mind is bringing my mind into agreement with yes. God's thoughts. Yes. Be renewed. He said, you put off the old behavior. We are not victims to sin. No. We're not obligated not to sin. Debtors. We don't have, we, we're not victims to the, to the adversary. Uh -uh. Uh, we can walk in the victory that's ours in Christ Jesus. And this is part of that victory, that my mind is brought into that victory, that yeah. my thinking is in line with the Word of God. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Notice that this instruction is to you, me, to the believer. All of us. You put yeah. off the old, you renew the mind, you put on the new man in Christ. You put it on. And so the, the interlocking mechanism there in the putting off of the old and the putting on the new is the renewing of the mind. Standing yeah. right there in the middle of verse 22 and 24 is 23 that says to put, on, to put yeah. off the old and put on the new, you're going to have to change the way you think yeah. so that you can cooperate with this new man that you are in Christ. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you, you, you talked about something the other day with us working in addiction circles and whatnot. And I've done, we've done that for years. Yes. Even, even secular groups have figured this out. Because one, one uh, uh, particular group, uh, they have a, a list of steps and whatnot that they go through that help people. And here, here's the thing that I like. The very first one says this. I have come to this, basically I'm paraphrasing, I've come to this conclusion that alcohol, drugs, whatever it is, is ruling my life and I've made the conscious decision that I need help to overcome this. So I've got to admit, in other words, they're saying you've got to first admit that you have a problem. Come yes. to see that my life is unmanageable because of this. Yes. So the first step in renewing your mind is seeing that you need to renew your mind. Yes, yes. That's the first step. And then everything else falls in place. But until you're willing to say, I can't do this. I got to have, I need victory over this. How do I do this? And start renewing my mind. It's impossible to do it. But when you renew your mind, it can be done. It can be done. The because you've got to do it. That's my point in saying that was you've got to put off the old man and you've got to put on the new man. And to, do, to walk in the new man that we are in Christ Jesus, to walk in the supernatural, born again, heir of God, yeah. who we are, yeah. kings and priests, dominion, who, the, this requires us to allow God's thoughts 
to govern the way we think. Yeah. When I first got saved, you know, um, it's really apparent for me because I was so far away from God's thoughts when I came to Him. Mm -hmm. When I first got saved, I had been a drug addict for a number of years. I mean, I, I ran away from home when I was 15 and I was 23 when I got saved. Mm -hmm. So from 15, before 15, so for at least a good 10, 12 years, I had been thinking like an addict. I had an addict's mindset. I looked at things from a drug addict's point of view. I, I walked in and when I got saved, yeah. I, there was at first, I felt so guilty because I still thought things in line with the way I had lived before. Mm -hmm. You know, I would walk into a store and instead of looking at the price of the milk, I would be looking at what kind of security cameras because I was a criminal. <laughs> right. And I was looking to see, you know, how stiff is there? Is, there, is it going to be hard for me to shoplift in this store? And then I would be like, I'm saved. I Why am shoplift. I thinking that way? I would look at certain objects that I had used for drugs. Right. You know, other people look at a spoon and they might think ice cream. But at that time, when I looked at a spoon, I would think about heroin. I would think yeah. about um, mixing up my cocaine in it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I would look at a dollar bill and I would think about chewing up my pill in it because I, I was addicted to a drug called Dilaudid and we would chew it up in a dollar bill, pour it into the syringe, mix it. I, I thought about objects like a spoon from a drug addict's point of view. And when I first got saved, the thoughts were still there. I would still look at a spoon and think that way. People might still look at a, um, a, a beer commercial and their mouth water. Yeah. And they think, but I just got saved two weeks ago. Why is my mouth watering? Because the mind, mind is still yeah. connected to the flesh. Yeah. That's how it worked for you before. And I would often uh, repent to God and say, God, I'm so sorry. The more that I renewed my mind, though, the more that that old way was disconnected from me. It didn't, the thoughts never again had those same power yeah. over me because now I had new thoughts. And so I just want to pray for you today. Amen. Maybe you're watching and you would say, Amen. you know, I've, I've lived this life and it's all I know. I'm telling you, God wants you to know something. Amen that's going to change your life. And Amen. it begins by accepting Jesus Christ as Lord. If you've never received Jesus, I want to tell you that he died on the cross to purchase and to pay for the sin that we have committed. Thank you, and when Lord. we accept him and what he did on the cross, then we accept him as Lord and he comes into our life and he renews our, our being with, with new life. But then he'll help you to change your mind. So pray with me right now and just open up your heart and say this. I believe Jesus died on the cross. I believe that he died in my place and I believe God raised him from the dead. Today, I accept Jesus as my Lord, Hallelujah. as my Savior. And thank you, Lord, for giving me a new life. Now, I'm going to tell you something. When God saved me, I had been addicted to drugs for all of those years. I'd lost my first husband to a drug overdose. I'd lost my children because of my drug addiction. I was in a position that was absolutely hopeless. I almost went to prison for 10 years because of the armed robberies I had been involved in. But God, when he came into my life and he came walking in my graveyard, he turned my life around and he has given me a life worth living. I have preached the gospel all across the United States of America. And it is only because God's plan for me Amen. was so much better than any mistake that I had ever made. And it wasn't hindered by any of the things that I had chosen to do in my life before Christ. And God's no respecter of person. Amen. He'll do that same thing for you. Amen. And I want to say, praise God that you prayed that prayer today. Call us and let us know. We want to rejoice with you Amen. in that change that God Amen. has brought into your life. Amen. So there you have it, proof positive that the renewed mind is a possibility and an assurity when you get a hold of the Word of God. The enemy wants to lie to you and tell you it's hopeless, there's nothing that you can do, you fell again for the third or the fourth or the fifth or the tenth or the second or the, the first time. No, the Bible says, don't rejoice over me, my enemy, because when I fall, I will arise. So you need to just let the enemy know and let your situation know, I may have missed it, I may have fallen, 
but I'm getting back up and I'm going to go back at it and I'm going to renew my mind to the word of God and I'm going to see God's best for my life. We love you. We're thankful for you. We're grateful for this opportunity and this responsibility to speak into your life. And we hope that you'll join us for the next great Faith Builders broadcast. So until that time, we want to remind you to please remember, build your faith, frame your world by the Word of God. God bless you. It's been said that the person who wins the mind wins the game. Many believers struggle with the same issues repeatedly, and in many cases, they have struggled for years. Hopelessness begins to set in as they wonder if they will ever be set free. What is the issue? The mind. Pastor Philip still teaches us in this three CD series that the Word of God gives us direction to bring clarity and freedom to us as we understand that we can have perfect mind control. To receive our gift to you, call us at 1-501-400-8797 or online at buildfaith.net. You can also write us at P.O. Box 242692, Little Rock, Arkansas 72223. Take control of your thoughts and begin to live your best life today. This is Pastor Philip Steele, and I want to invite you out to Little Rock's new Word of Faith Church, Faith Builders Church, right here in Little Rock, Arkansas. Our address is 10500 Markham. We have services Sunday morning at 10 a.m., Sunday nights at 6 p.m., and Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m., our hour of power. If you're hungry for the moving of the gifts of the Spirit, the gifts of healing, the working of miracles, if you're hungry for the moving of the Holy Ghost, then we're the church for you. We value the Word of God and believe that the Word of God is the answer to all of your problems. We have a whole slate of services that are available for your family. We have nursery ministry, children's ministry, and youth ministry, all geared towards building your faith and framing your world by the Word of God. I'd really love to see you. Come and see us. And until then, God bless you. Thank you for your partnership. We have many ways that you can connect with us through your generous giving or prayers. Not only will your seed into this ministry help spread the gospel, it will produce a harvest in your own life. You can sow online, by mail, or by phone. Thank you for your faithful partnership.